Hello and welcome to week five of the Friday Night Sports Show. Alongside Mike Gilbert, I'm AJ Donatoni. Last week, high school football teams of the Lackawanna League took the field for the first time in 2020. Yeah, one of those teams that made its season debut was Dunmore. The Bucks are a uh, coming off a district championship season, have aspirations of not only repeating that, but advancing in the state bracket and Dunmore going up against Mid Valley. This is a rematch of last year's district final. The fire very much still alive. Spartans get the ball first. Cameron Ricardo going to big right off the bat. Kyle Marsinkevich is there who makes the catch. A few steps later, though, Buck's defense coming up big. Kieran Array has the strip. Christian Buckley the recovery. Spartan defense would come up big on the ensuing drive. Fourth and goal inside the one. Mid manages to keep the Bucks out, but Dunmore not exactly worried. Their next drive, they'll get Buckley the rock on offense. Right down Broadway, 40-plus yards to the house. We've got action on the scoreboard. Spartans quick to answer. Their next drive into the red zone. Capped off as Ricardo finds Connor Coxis. Hey, PAT failed. It's still the Bucks by one. Second quarter, Dunmore's Tommy Bowen keeps it himself, extends the lead. Aliyah Devin all over the place to help the Spartans in the comeback effort, but it was all for naught. Peyton Badrika from 23 yards out here. It'd be 17-6 in the early third, and Dunmore comes away with the victory 30-14. to Nice opener for the Bucks. How about Scranton Prep and Western Wayne? They both won their openers last week going head-to-head -head this Friday. Pick it up in the second quarter. Senior Patty Grady throws it 45 plus yards to Robert Rossi for the Cavaliers fourth touchdown. But the Wildcats moving the ball as well. Jordan uh, Junior Caden Brungard looks, tosses it to Zane Janiszewski who gets around Prep's defense and has daylight. 60 plus yard run and they're in business. Two plays later, hard to see who gets there uh, out of the pile but it's Brungard raising the ball over the pylon. Uh, that touchdown is Western Wayne's second of the night, but less than 16 seconds uh, left in the first half. Scranton Prep squeezes in one more touchdown. Grady making the quarterback position look easy. How about that throw to Rossi, who reaches over the defender for Prep's seventh touchdown of the night. Cavaliers go on to win 48-21. Valley View had to forfeit its first game, so making its debut on the field this week against Honesdale. All Cougars from the get-go on the doorstep early. TJ Noto goes up the gut, running over defenders on his way to the end zone, stretches across for the score, 7-0. Valley View in the red zone again later in the first, this time Corey Coulthard. He too showing off his power, gets some help from his lineman to push him over the plane, and then Noto up the middle, this time a little less resistance from the defense as he gallops in for the third touchdown of the first quarter, and Valley View cruises to a 39-0 win. Now to the Wyoming Valley Conference, where Crestwood is off to a great start this season, and the Comets had a chance to really prove themselves against a defending state champion. Yeah, AJ, Crestwood playing host to Wyoming area in week five. First quarter, Comets try the screen pass, but it's jumped by Jacob Williams. He's the Warriors quarterback, plays a little defensive back to instant field position for Wyoming area. They take advantage. Leo Harros, watch this, he's going to nearly stumble, but able to beat the turf monster and makes it in for six. Wyoming area leads seven nothing, but Crestwood 4-0, they don't panic. Noah Schultz almost fumbled the snap, but he should try out for whose line is it anyway, because that's some good improv. Scrambles all the way down inside the Warriors 10 yard line. And then we had the uh, potential play of the night nominee. Fourth and goal, Gutsy called to go for a touch pass oh, yeah. to Ryan Petrosky, stays in bounds and hangs on. Wow, just wow. Tie ball game, but Crestwood Goes on to win 14-13 the final. They remain perfect. Comets 5-0, Mike. Williamsport looking to keep its unbeaten mark intact, taking on Valley West. Millionaire's little reverse near the goal line there. DJ Green works his way to the end zone, makes it a 20-7 game in the first quarter. In the second, Port threatening again. Keith Freeman on the handoff, bulldozes his way in to make it 26-7. Valley West defense trying to make something happen to get back into the game. They do force the fumble here, and the Spartans recover. So a little bit of life just before the half. And on the final play of the first half, Dante Rhodes, a Hail Mary. Tyler Weidman answers the prayer, bringing it down. What a touchdown for the Spartans. It was their highlight of the night because Williamsport in control the rest of the way. Millionaires win 48-13. They too are undefeated still. Northwest area continuing its northern tier schedule, visiting Muncie, and it was the Rangers scoring first. Quarterback Carter Hans pulls down the high snap, kept it himself. Up the middle, 26-yard touchdown. Northwest on top, 7-0. Muncie responds later in the first. The pitch goes to Ty Nixon on fourth down. He scores from five yards out. That ties the game at seven. And at the end of the first quarter, Rangers break out some trickery. The handoff to Ryan Wassel. He stops, chucks it downfield to Scott Oliver. 
Little flea flicker puts the Rangers in position to score once again, but the Muncie defense comes up big. Brady Ryder breaks up that touchdown pass attempt in the end zone on fourth down. Muncie offense takes over, and later in the second, Branson Iyer throws out to the near side. That's Ross Iyer. He's there to make the catch, and he takes it to the house 73 yards. This game went down to the wire. Uh, to the wire. Final score, Muncie 21, Northwest Area 13. That was a crossover game between two, uh, District 2 and District 4, and next up we'll be keeping things in Central Pennsylvania with some pretty good matchups. Danville coming off its first loss of the season, looking to bounce back against Central Columbia. Both teams coming in at 3-1. and one. We'll have highlights of that game and more, but first, we've got the sights and sounds of the Blue Jays' marching band.